Hey everybody, Big Z here from Side by Side Guys with Uncle Ben. Hey, what's up? And uh, today we're going to be doing a little something different. We're going to be looking at his belt and clutch. Uh, a lot of you guys don't know this, but uh, you're supposed to regularly take maintenance and care of your clutching system. And uh, Not this guy. Apparently he hasn't done it yet. So um, back in 2016, we both uh, obtained Razor Turbos. Uh, I had a four-seater and he got a two-seater. That guy right there. And uh, we're going to take a look at his clutch and his belt because... We've never done it. We've never taken a look at it, apparently. Um, <laughs> all these years, we've done everything kind of like on my four-seater turbo and my four-seater 1000s and the different units that I've had access to. And we've never really considered looking at his. So today's going to be the first time in almost four years uh, since that clutch has been opened. Um, we've literally never blown it out. We've never changed the belt. Um, One time it's been open, but that was by the dealership. It was opened by the dealership for the 2016 recalls where they replaced, I believe, the clutch, the secondary rollers or the, the primary roller or something like that. And uh, they did some ECU flashing and whatnot during that time, during all the... When we couldn't ride our machines. Into, the, into that, the year of not riding in 2016 recall, um, there was very little riding then. Uh, and there was a lot of uh, downtime this year too, so... Um, but uh, we just took a look at the tack, and um, you've clocked 2,300 miles. 2,300 miles, exactly. Now, if you don't believe me, we're going to go take a look. I don't know if you can see that. 2,300 exactly. No joke. 2,300 miles for this guy on a four-year-old turbo. Factory so belt factory belt this this belt has never been replaced this belt is oem from the factory day it was new to the doorstep of this guy right here and it's not that i'm like super easy on it either no you you've got gotten... i've smoked it several times Cut and to... you know what if it still works why fix it now you do have a spare i do have a spare that i've toted the whole time <laughs> so and never is, have needed it this is a like a three and a half year old spare belt that's never been used <laughs> Yeah, it probably needs to be replaced from just sitting in the machine. It's probably dry rotted by now. But uh, you're not known to go easy. I mean, you get stuck on sandhill climbs. All and the time. Cut to that. Boop. And uh, this guy likes to do some ornery stuff once in a while. So um, this will be interesting. We're going to pop the clutch cover off and see what we find. A lot of dirt. <laughs> oh man i don't know if you can see that <laughs> there's a lot of dirt in there can we can we oh it's a little dusty big guy <laughs> you can see it falling out on the tire there <laughs> oh man oh yeah baby oh my goodness you want to take your first impressions there of uh first <laughs> beat Oh, it's a little brown in there, but the belt's still connected. That's a big thing. Not seeing chunks of metal, so that's great. Oh, man. That's probably on the bottom. <laughs> you might have three clutches in there. <laughs> Could be the secret to my speed. <laughs> it's nice on those new pros that the clutch bolts are all captive. You don't have to, like, lose them in the sand or whatever. So they get, there's a few down underneath there too. Four, six, eight, nine. Oh, I think there might be, oh, you got one in your hand here. Okay, this just falls right off here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, look how easy that came off. We've never taken one off that easy. Wow doesn't look that bad I was expecting way worse well I can say that the clutch doesn't look the housing doesn't look too bad I mean you got the water and grass there from the top but let's take a look under here what have we got you know I honestly was expecting a whole lot more dirt than that <laughs> Wow I'm uh, I'm shocked it really doesn't look not bad for first impressions. You know, honestly, I expected your belt to be half gone too. 
I was expecting a little couple threads, maybe. But that's not, I mean, it definitely is getting sticky, but it's not, it still works. Because, I mean, it's been jumpy a little bit, so, I mean, I'm expecting to see some, maybe some glassing on the belt, but. I got some grooving down low. On the sheath? Yeah. But that's about it. What do you say we pop that belt off and get a good look at that and get a good feel around those sheaves? Yeah, huh. a little compressed air. Put her back together, go another <laughs> 2,300 miles. I think this belt might have another 1,000 on it at least. Well, color me shocked. I'm uh, quite surprised. <laughs> uh, that is, I guess I need to push it a little harder. I guess. I guess you're just a little uh, gentle on your machine. <laughs> I guess I'm a pansy. I um, I know where the skinny pedal is, and obviously the clutch is doing just fine. Well, let's let's pop her off and take a look. So we couldn't find the clutch tool, so a little quarter twenty bolt we'll have to do. See if I can do this one-handed magically. Oh snap! One-handed. You got her. Just showing a little bit of separation. Not much though. But I think those are just dings from stuff coming in. As you can see, it's really not that bad. Here's my new belt. <laughs> <laughs> the new belt is worse than the old belt. <laughs> this is what a 2300 mile stored belt Looks like. <laughs> it matches my counter. How'd you do that? Oh my goodness. Well, you can see what side was facing in. Jesus. Good grief. <laughs> Look at that. If I were to put that up, which one would you guess is the old belt? Goodness. It's not completely worn down or anything. Maybe look, see if there's any cracks on the inside or whatever. Like normally you would see where all in here from the rollers. There's a little bit here. But I don't see any fraying from the rollers or anything. I am com I am completely dumbfounded that this thing is in one piece, let alone in near perfect condition after 2,300 miles. <laughs> I think you need to go buy a lotto ticket. <laughs> is it separation or is it just dirt coming it's apart? It's just dirt. Man, I, I honestly don't know what to say. That's amazing. Well, I think you officially broke it in after 2,300 miles. He is when it starts smoking to stop, let it cool down, and then continue on. That's the only thing. It. That's the only thing I've ever done. I've never, never burnt it just to make a smoke show. Um, I mean, I it's not even glassed. Say. Like it's, you can see where it's been used, but it's not glassed or anything. I think we need to. <laughs> I think we need to wash your other belt, though. <laughs> I think this is just gonna get hung on the wall because I don't need to carry who needs, it. Who needs belts when you got these kind of belts? That, okay, all right. So, just so everyone's aware, these are OEM Polaris belts. These are not aftermarket. These are straight from the factory, brand new with the machine. They came with the machine. These are not replacements. These are not, you know, blown a belt, learning how to use the machine. These are factory belts and uh, Holy crap. <laughs> I have nothing to say other than wow. Wow. So all you guys on the forums that say that you can't use an OEM belt, that you have to go aftermarket, you're wrong. Because that's proof. 2,300 miles of proof that you can have a great belt and a great experience with the factory belt. And if you blow your belt, then either you're trying too hard or compensating for something. Well, I guess the next question is, what do your sheaves look like? <laughs> well, tear into it and see what that looks like. Holy cow. All right, well, I guess uh, we'll cut and go to clutch removal. All right, so new day. Taking a little bit of a day trip with my buddy Ian. Gonna go hit up some of his uh, customers on the west side of the state. Puppies wanna go with us, but they're, they're staying home. But I'm not. We're gonna go have a good time. Alright Ian, 
what are we doing? We're in your truck. We're oh. not. We're not in the 509 anymore. Yeah. Uh, a few sales calls, a whole bunch of phone calls, a whole bunch of text messages. Gonna make a few. Uh, make a stop over here in Sumner, Washington, while we're over here to see the buddy over at Octane Toy Box, uh, Rich Maxi. Rich. So that'll be cool. I haven't been over there to their store yet. Ian, you were gonna go over there to pick something up and say hi and do your thing. Yeah, I got a couple. Uh, oh, hi, State Patrolman. I uh, got a. Uh, got the hookup from Rich with some uh, paddle tires leading into the event that's going off next weekend. Uh, I don't know what the official name of the event was. It, 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 last year it was Goons in the Dunes. Yeah. I was a little concerned about riding Winchester without a set of paddles and Rich uh, Rich helped me out with something fierce. We're picking up a set of, uh, well we're over here getting a set of fuel rims and some uh, scats. 32 inches for the X3, so I'm pretty excited to see how that thing's gonna perform out there. Yeah, right now you got the, the Max Liberties, the ones that come with it, right? And those yep. are 32s, right? Well, our battery stopped for some stupid reason. Don't know why that was. But uh, anyways, we're gonna pick up some, some replacements for those Liberties so that you can get around in the dirt. Yeah, I, I, no, just kind of what I've been picking up on on this trip though, uh, anytime there's snow in the forecast and you have to travel over to the 253 into the Seattle area, go. Because nobody's <laughs> on the road. When Nobody you, wants yeah, to every, conquer that every, mountain. Everybody in Seattle is scared of uh, scared of that white stuff. So we've had, uh, knock on wood, we've had some pretty clear sailing. So Yeah, I, yeah. days like today are the days that good drivers <laughs> like to get out and put the gas down a little bit. So yeah. uh, anyways, we're headed to, to Octane Toy Box and uh, looking forward to meeting those guys. Was working on pulling the clutch out of the Uncle Ben's razor and um, thought it'd be pretty straightforward but I couldn't find a uh, clutch puller tool in time so uh, I was trying to make up some time by going to the store and making one of my own. Um, we take a look over here. So I'd made my own puller with a three uh, quarter inch rod with a 16 thread and some nuts. Uh, just simply lock tighted them and uh, jam those on with the impact but um, what happened was as soon as we got going here uh, being a 2016 that which are known for being really stuck and stubborn uh, the bolt just stopped spinning so <clears throat> the clutch didn't move at all and uh, so anyways we blew it out cleaned it out um, with air but uh, we're going to be heading to a friend of ours to borrow a clutch tool and um, see if we can't pop this thing out today. All right guys, new day and uh, was able to go pick up a new tool. Um, as you saw before, uh, we tried initially with um, a tapered uh, three quarter inch 16 thread rod. And as you can see here, I don't know, let's see if we can, can't really get it to focus on this this close, but you can see how it was uh, starting to pinch through the drive shaft of the primary um, and then we went to an all thread non-tapered version try to get some more torque and it was doing the same thing um, and we were reefing on that pretty good so this 2016 turbo doesn't want to come off uh, this primary is on there good it's never been off and uh wouldn't doubt that there might be some rust or something in there but 
Um, we're gonna try something new. So we got a new clutch puller tool from our friend Chris over at Carbon Custom Works. And you can see that this one's tapered, has the tapered shaft to go through where that couldn't, right? So that's gonna be getting all the way down past where that was all the way down to the casing. And we had tried doing it with the bolts and a drive extension to do the same thing. So you can see how that is basically the same effect, um, but that didn't really do anything either. So we're gonna try this tool. And then we also picked up a secondary tool from Chris to let us um, collapse that and take a look at the, let's get to it. Just real quick guys, uh, this is a snap ring plier set from Harbor Freight Tools. It's one of their Icon series. Um, they are relatively inexpensive compared to uh, Snap-on, Bluepoint, um, all those guys. And they're actually a really decent quality plier. Um, and they this kit comes with all the angles. So 90 uh, straight and 45. Uh, in both closing and opening in each of those angles. So um, they don't fit the really small things, but they're pretty high quality for what they are. And uh, a lot of times we talk about Harbor Freight being throwaway tools, but their Icon series has proven to be pretty good. So if you're out there to save a buck with some decent quality tools, Icon stuff's the way to go. guys so we pulled the primary off uh, sometimes it pays to have the right tool um, the homemade DIY uh, puller tool probably would work for non turbos or non 16s but in this case this was the key to getting it off so in the primary you got your you got your nut your spider nut you got your cap you got your spring you got your sliders um, we're not going to take this all the way apart today uh, we're just going to inspect it clean it and make sure she's good to go um, uh, we're going to be looking at maybe doing a rebuild kit here soon and showing what that's like and the performances you can get out of that but uh, i think we're going to basically do a deep dive on this and uh, as much as we can without tearing it apart completely and get um, get it cleaned up because i don't have this tool here to get this off this is in a standard socket you could probably make your own but you'll probably end up breaking it trying to get this off there's so much pressure and so much thread and Loctite on this that it's, it's really hard to get off without the right tools. So you can also damage it. So I wouldn't recommend hacking your way off of this. I would recommend buying the tool from Starting Line Performance or one of those other guys that have those tools. All right, so I lied. I'm going to take this apart. Uh, I borrowed the presser from the secondary clutch tool. And I'm going to take this and push it down and then take uh, the cap's uh, nuts off. So I kind of lied. I'm going to take... The presser from the secondary uh, tool and I'm going to use it as a compressor to push down and then while I'm doing that I'm going to loosen these uh, bolts out of the cap. So one thing before I get into this too far uh, is to mark your primary orientations. So if you have a paint pen use that, if not use a sharpie and you're going to want to indicate which sides all touch and go together where they align so that when you reassemble it, everything is still balanced and the wear patterns all match the same. That off. Um, this just comes off. You can see all the bolts are captured here. Um, so you can see that there's some wear here. That's actually from this cap here. This is your spring retainer and it has a notch on it to keep the spring centered. So you want to make sure that it goes back together the same. So you can see that this is, acts like a bearing on the cap. So if this is dirty, that's gonna wear uh, more aggressively over time than it would be if you clean it and uh, scotch bright it pretty good. Okay, so this is the OEM spring. And you can see we have a little bit of wearing on the side, um, but it doesn't look to be in horrible shape uh, outside of that wearing a little bit. So let's see what that's about. This bushing here. It's pretty dirty, a little bit rusted. Um, I'm just gonna scotch bright it really good and try to get that shiny. And um, 
So we're just going to take a look at these sliders. So you can see where they're rubbing up and down as the clutch moves. You'll feel if there's any kind of um, grooving or indentation or anything like that. On the back side, you can see where the pressure rubs up and down on the slider on the body of the clutch. But that should just all be dirt. Um, shouldn't be anything of concern because this isn't moving. The slider's moving inside of it. So before we look at the sheaves, you can see that bearing in here. A little dark, but you can see how much gunk is in there. It's built up over time, and that's not going to create an optimal scenario where, where it can slide up and down real well. Even just doing this manually, there's still hesitation there because of that buildup. So that can cause pre pre premature wear. Um, you don't want that, obviously, in a clutch. So uh, we'll take a look get, and get that cleaned. Taking a look at the sheave surfaces. It's not too bad. There's a little bit of pitting here at the bottom. There's a little bit of groove there. Nothing to be too concerned about. All right, our bearing on a turbo is a non-one-way bearing. You can feel it's a little bit dirty. Um, so I think we'll rebuild this at some point and replace that. Other side of the sheaves feels good. Just needs to get scotch brighted. And you can see how much dirt is just down in there. Um, it works its way in and dirt will destroy any moving parts. So always a good idea if you have the ability to take these off and clean them to do so. Okay, looking at our first flyweight, um, on the bolt you can see that we have the wear is a little bit heavy on the right side. It looks, at the moment, it's just fine. Next thing you want to do is to clean off the surface of the roller, or the clean off the surface of the, the weight so that you don't have any dirt impacting what you're feeling. Feel the transition of the weight. These OEM ones have a little bit of a lip here. You can kind of see it uh, there. It's, it's been ground down, but it's still there. There's no premature wear, and everything's looking pretty good. Now the sides have no pitting, no chipping. Um, just by the indicator of this bolt, I can see that it's wearing a little bit on this side, and I would, I'd be willing to bet that's the drive side, so there's no grooving in the bolt. Everything looks good, just needs to get cleaned up. You can see that obviously we got some, some rusting and some buildup in there on the inside. We can see we have our sliders. Sliders all look decent. None of them look hard, worn, or uh, brittle, or anything like that. So we'll just clean it. As far as the sheave surface goes, a little bit of a groove there. A little bit on the top where the belt sits. No real serious pitting. It, it's starting to a little bit. But for now, that's so thick that I wouldn't be worried about it. So there's just a little bit there. I think if we just resurface with a Brillo, we're going to be good. We can see there's a little bit of wearing in there, um, but that's just from plastic on metal sliding around. It's nothing, there's no grooves or anything to worry about there. All right, backside, helix. So this is the part that's under pressure, and we have the tool to do that. So let's, let's compress that and get that out of there. So it's pretty cold in the garage, and all the metal's really cold, and... The Helix isn't compressing much at all, and I'm not really feeling comfortable on taking the cap out without um, a little bit more control. So I'm going to heat it up. Uh, the cap uh, bolts seemed like they had a lot, of, a lot of pressure on them. So what I'm going to do is heat the whole thing up, try to try to get it warm, and then once it's warm, uh, try to reapproach it and see if um, that loosens things up a little bit. top cap you can see the wearing on the top of the cap has been pretty it's like chewed up pretty good it's not smooth it's pretty grippy so if we take a look at the helix you can see that it just there's no bearing there's no sleeve there's no nothing that stops this from just chewing up that cap nasty stuff going on here but so why would that happen that would happen from the helix and the sheave aka the cap coming together suddenly so uh, it's it's moving and then all of a sudden just clamping down like that um, and that's what uh, hitting holes and hitting uh, you know 
obstacles that just hit you hard where you're going at speed or you're going in movement and then all of a sudden everything just comes to a dead stop and where you break your axles and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that's, that's proof right there that our 2300 mile belt uh, wasn't done anything easy. Okay, so you got your spring shim. Obviously the, the nipple goes in between the, the spring. You have your stock spring. You can see a little bit of wearing right there from being fully compressed and probably rubbing on the side of the bell. Now that you can take the secondary, the inside bell out, that 16 turbos have these, what they call buttons. And these are consumable parts. Um, Polaris considers them a, a 700 to 1000 mile replacement part. So I think what we're gonna end up doing is replacing these. You can see there's some significant flattening um, on those. So you can see the primary drive side and the secondary reverse side. Reverse has a lot less wear than the drive side. And you can see there's a little lip right here. And that lip is gonna create more friction and ultimately gonna disintegrate these buttons. So we have a lip on all three. Um, but I don't see any damage that would concern me, just we need to replace those. So ultimately, everything's looking fairly good for never being touched in 2300 miles. Um, I feel confident in putting this all back together and having another uh, a number of miles left in it, but we're gonna replace these buttons. We're gonna probably replace the weights with something adjustable, uh, primary spring, um, and probably put some power pucks or something in here in the primary to make that smooth um, and replace the, the bushings. But other than that, now it's just time to clean and put it all back together. All right guys, I just wanted to show you kind of the difference between uh, a used sheave on a clutch and a clean sheave on a clutch. Um, not sure if you can see the difference here as well as I can, uh, or maybe you can. Clean, not clean. You can see that on a dirty sheave, it gets this really silvery gray patina and everything is kind of just glassed over. Where if you take the time to use a scratch bright pad with some simple green or, or Dawn dish soap or something like that, and take time just to put a crosshatch cleaning pattern on your sheave, you can get almost all the nitty gritty stuff off and have almost a brand new sheave as long as it's not damaged. But look how good that looks. Look at that. That is so dirty. Oh my God. So I go around once just to get everything kind of breaking in. I'm not really pushing too hard, but I'm more or less just trying to get the degreaser and the cleaner worked into the surface. And you can see that I'm already putting some scuff marks on the sheave, which is a good thing. I'm getting through that layer of glassed over rubber from the belt. And then it's wet, I'll just let it sit here for a minute and then I'll come back, dip it again and just keep going and just cycle. I'll do a circular pattern all the way around and then I'll do a straight hash and then I'll do a circular and a straight hash and eventually you get that. I'm about halfway through cleaning the in, inner bell of the secondary sheaves and you can see that they're getting pretty close but this one's definitely got a lot more streaking and a lot more pitting and whatnot going on. So I'm gonna work uh, more on this one to get it to match this one. So I got done cleaning the out the inside of the sheave of the back side of the secondary and I got in here to clean up the sliders and everything and um, you can see down here there's some um, significant wear there and there's a definite divot right there right in the middle and I think you can see it. It's significantly impregnated into that, that column there and I'm pretty sure that is from that part of the spring right there, uh, rubbing up on that. And so how would that happen? If the spring is compressed down in there like that, there's still a gap, right? Well, the only way that would have happened is if the spring would have went cockeyed sideways and hit the side over there and repetitively done that to create that groove. So, um, Going to probably be looking at wear patterns so we can see down in here where the spring was hitting. Um, it looks like it, it, it was sitting uh, at least for a while 
at an angle there because if you look at the spring, if you look at the spring, uh, the spring doesn't go to a straight leg, right? It's round all the way around. This spring, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it does have a little bit of a cant to it. So I'm wondering if that's what did it, but you can see basically the idea is uh, that line right there is from a, the spring going out. Um, that could have been from just, uh, you know, a lot of low mile an hour uh, riding where it was compressed. Now, don't get me wrong, this has got plenty of life left in it. But when you take things apart like this, you, you can start to see things and you can start to understand things before it becomes a problem. So if I would have never addressed this, if I never cleaned it, you know, this wearing could have then eventually compromised the spring and, and broke that, which then would have, um, you know, possibly damaged the clutch, the entire clutch, and then also the rest of the transmission. So, um, yeah, getting things apart, taking a look at them, analyzing the wear patterns is going to really give you more education and more knowledge, and more knowledge is going to give you uh, more insight to your machine to better prepare and handle and uh, replace wearing out parts. All right, guys, just uh, got done cleaning the sheaves and all the components of the clutches. So uh, to summarize, the secondary uh, cleaned up pretty good and the sheaves are nice and clean. And the only thing that I'm worried about on the secondary is the, what they call buttons. Um, they're pretty worn and the cap is pretty grooved along with the helix. So uh, we're probably gonna upgrade the spring, the helix, and the buttons on this and get that back up and going and then on the primary we have uh, everything looking pretty good the sliders looked like they were worn a little bit but you cleaned up pretty well uh, because I didn't have the uh, spider socket here to do it I didn't take it all the way apart but I cleaned all the components inside and all the surfaces of the bearing and the spacer everything is nice and clean now uh, there's a little bit of a groove down here, but every clutch gets that and everything's looking great. So uh, Let's get back on the Ranger Had a post the other day about which of these two belts had the most miles on them and the one on the left is brand new the one on the right 2300 miles exactly straight from the dealership 2300 miles pretty impressed with this belts lasted that long and since we have a brand new belt uh, I think we're just gonna wash this one up give it a scrub down clean up the old the uh, old spare and put that into a savage UTV case took the turbo out for a test drive the uh, clutch performed awesome it uh, it was before we cleaned it and ma did maintenance on it it would get real jerky on the takeoff uh, it would just be slipping and uh, from the way that the dirt was built up and everything on the sliders and on the um, the shafts I don't think that clutch was uh, engaging smoothly for a long time so uh, now that it's fixed that's awesome uh, now we're headed out to Winchester Bay uh, to hit some dunes and uh, going to team up with Ian from Full Throttle Battery and a bunch of guys from Pacific Northwest, uh, Facebook groups and things like that, along with some industry guys. So it should be a fun weekend ahead. And uh, until the next one, peace.